Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. A few notes before we start. Audio is provided via the GoToWebinar application over the internet, so please enable your speaker in all places. The application has muted your microphone. There is a question tab at the right side of your screen. Please use this tab to type any questions you have at any time. I will review the questions at some point and answer them. If they're not answered within the webinar time, we will answer them offline. Today we are going to talk about reducing project lifecycle costs with Excellentia. So we know many of the features of Excellentia help the user to save time. For this webinar, we have attempted to quantify just how much time is saved and how that impacts the overall cost of a project. My name is Kate Hildenbrandt. I'm a product sales engineer here at Exeta. I have a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering from Lehigh University. My role at Exeta is to ensure customer success by providing training and application support for users of Excellentia, Silstat, and any of our other tools. So today we're going to start with a brief overview of the life cycle, and then I'm going to go through each task of the safety life cycle, give a short overview on what's entailed in the task, and then give an estimate of how many hours this task might take with the in-house tool or Excel versus with Excellentia. This might look a little familiar. Uh, we, I did write a white paper um, with the same name, with the same subject, and the last webinar I did also was an overview of the safety life cycle, but without the cost-benefit estimate. So some of the slides you see today might be very similar to slides you saw if you tuned into my last webinar that was in January 2017. Um, I am going to do a brief overview of each task, but I may not get as detailed as I did in that webinar. So if you have any questions, you can ask me or you can follow that link and see if they're answered in there. So we're going to start with a brief overview of the life cycle. So the functional safety life cycle provides a method to analyze, implement, and maintain a safety instrument and system from project scope de definition to decommission. And you can see here that this simple graphic shows how project-specific information can flow from module to module in Excellentia when using the entire life cycle suite. So the idea is that the user inputs information into Excellentia, and from there it can easily transfer or import to the next phase. This is a lot of what the time savings comes from, as well as some embedded databases and other functionality that will help. The basis of this estimate is pretty simple. For each task, we attributed a number of hours to complete the task using Excel or an in-house tool, and then compared it to the number of hours we estimate it would take using Excellentia. We estimated these hours per node in the PHA, per hazard scenario in the LOPA, and per SIF moving forward from that. We then extrapolate our scenario to 10 nodes. So we, we assumed analysis of each node will result in five hazard scenarios, so our unit total would be 50 hazard scenarios. And we assumed that each hazard scenario would result in one SIF for a total of 50 SIFs. Once the total life cycle hours are summed up, we applied two engineering rates to determine a cost range. One is an hourly rate at $75 per hour, and one is a burdened rate at $150 per hour. So I'm going to take you through, starting with the analysis phase, each task of the life cycle and see how it compares. So starting with the process hazard analysis. For proper analysis of a process system, you need to come equipped with a few things. First, the piping and instrumentation diagram, or the process flow diagram, or both. The process should be divided into smaller pieces or process units. 
Description of your safety instrumented functions from previous studies are very helpful and relevant information from past projects such as likelihood and consequence data. So if you are recording data from your pl plants that are running, um, that information is obviously invaluable in, in a new PHA. However, as a conservative estimate, we assumed users of Excellentia and Excel alike will have to start from scratch. Therefore, we attributed no time difference to this task. So once we get to the actual analysis, I like to think of the PHA as a brainstorming session. You ask yourself a number of questions. You might ask, how could something go wrong with your system? That answer is a deviation. So examples of the deviation include high pressure, low pressure, no flow, or misdirected flow. Other questions you might ask are, how could it go wrong? How bad is it? How can we prevent it? And how can we learn more? These are recorded as your cause, consequence, safeguard, and recommendations in your process hazard analysis. I have a screenshot here of what that looks like in Excellentia. Let me highlight this quickly. So here you can see you have a cause. You would record a likelihood and then the consequence of that cause. From there, you can record safeguards. And you have a resulting likelihood and risk depending on these safeguards. From there, you can list recommendations, you can assign the recommendations, a due date, and a status. You might notice on the side here we have what we call smart deviations. So for each node type, Excellentia has built-in deviations. So for example, this one is reactor. For every reactor, we believe you should be considering those 26 deviations that are listed. In this case, not all of the deviations may be applicable, but at least you thought about them and you can check that as no issues. These smart deviations are one of the time-saving elements of Excellentia. You might also notice here for each safeguard and consequence for recommendations, you have an ID number. What this refers to is the embedded libraries in Excellentia. For this high pressure alarm, it gave it an ID of one. You give it a tag and a category type. I will show you in a minute that that goes into a library that is kept in the project configuration of each project. You should never have to type in that specific alarm twice. Instead, you can just select it from the library. This is not only a time-saving element, but it drives consistency. If you change that safeguard in a different node, it will automatically change in the library and update the rest of your PHA. So this is a time-saving element because it saves on typing, but it also drives consistency. This is the kind of information that might transfer to your LOPA, your SRS, etc. So. This is what your library looks like. You notice that same high pressure alarm is there, ID 1, 2, 3, might look familiar also from the previous sheet. And you can see on the side that right now you're only seeing safeguards, but Excellentia also has similar libraries for causes, recommendations, references, etc. All of the information you see here is user input. So this is the kind of thing that this is the kind of data that will travel throughout the life cycle if you use the entire Excellentia suite. At the end of the PHA, you see on the side here, you can link your PHA to your LOPA. At this point, you would identify a hazard scenario that in your LOPA you would, you would analyze. So this hazard scenario in your LOPA would pull in the, I'm sorry, the cause, which would be your initiating event, and the safeguards, which would be your independent protection layers. I'll show you that in a minute.
but that automatically transfers from PHA to LOPA. Keep that in mind. Well, for a moment, I pause to look at the analysis. We assumed it would take 0.3 hours per node to prepare for the analysis. So in this case, we're, we're talking about our smart deviations. In other cases, if you weren't using Excelentia, you might have to sit and brainstorm all the deviations that would apply to a specific node. But in the tool, you simply pick your node and the deviations populate automatically. You can customize this to put in any deviations that we haven't thought of. So that if you have some sort of issue that you would like to analyze each time, you put it in your project configuration once and you never have to do it again. We assume that would save you a little bit of time. So with Excelentia, the same task would take 0.1 hours per node. Once in session, we assume the PHA would include five attendees. So for instance, you might want your process, your process control, process safety engineers, your operations and maintenance personnel, as well as a facilitator and a scribe. So we assumed five attendees and that Review of one node would usually take six hours. This might depend on how you break down your process. So let's consider this an average. Use of Excellentia's embedded libraries, as I showed you, and the easy navigation should cut down this task to four hours per node. So let's say over 10 nodes, Excellentia can save roughly 100 hours on the PHA. So then you're going to jump to your LOPA. The objective of the LOPA is to evaluate all safeguards as independent protection layers against the hazard scenario. The likelihood of the cause is multiplied by the probability of failure for each IPL. The resulting frequency is compared to the industry's tolerable frequency. If your actual frequency does not equal your tolerable frequency, a target risk reduction factor can be determined for an IPL. So as I mentioned, in Excelentia, your information from your PHA is automatically transferred into your LOPA sheet. This eliminates any retyping that you might have to do. If you have two different tools for your PHA and LOPA, it might take some time to put your whole system from one tool to the other. In this case, you don't have to worry about that at all. You simply push that button and automatically your hazard scenarios, your initiating events, and your IPLs are populated. As you can see, your LOPA tool will, will compare your target frequency to your actual frequency. In this case, they match. You can see that this IPL is given a risk reduction factor. If the IPL achieves its target, the actual frequency will equal the tolerable frequency. So you can see that calculations within the LOPA worksheet are very quick. One thing that you can't see on the screenshot is that you can click this button here, and it's a database that includes a number of industry averages for frequency of different initiating events. And if you were to open the different IPLs, there's another database for industry average probability of failures for the different kinds of IPLs. So again, instead of having to look these things up, the answers are at your fingertips. So for this estimate, we assumed it would usually take three hours per node to prepare for the LOPA, including compiling the useful information from the PHA. So Excellentia transfers this information with the push of a button. This prep time is eliminated. Once in session, we assumed the LOPA would include th three attendees, and that review of one hazard scenario would usually take 2.5 hours. Using Excellentia's automatic calculation in the worksheet and the embed embedded database that I mentioned. 
use of excellence should, should cut this down to 1.5 hours per hazard scenario. So remember that we assumed that each node would result in five hazard scenarios. Therefore, over 10 nodes and the resulting 50 hazard scenarios, Excellentia can save roughly 300 hours on the LOPA. Once your LOPA is complete, you move on to SIL selection. So for each SIF defined in the LOPA, the risk reduction factor is the ratio of the actual frequency of the hazard divided by its target frequency. The value of this factor correlates to a safety integrity level, and you can see how they compare on the chart below. So in Excellentia, your LOPA sheet will automatically calculate the risk reduction factor of a given SIF, and that will correlate to so 1, 2, 3, or 4. For this SIF, the target risk reduction factor is 100, and that was automatically calculated in the LOPA sheet. Therefore, the target safety integrity level is SIL2. Since Excellentia performs the SIL selection calculations automatically based on the LOPA, we estimated you would save up to 15 minutes per SIF. So assuming each hazard scenario is analyzed and the LOPA requires one SIF, about 12 hours can be saved by using Excellentia for SIL selection. So again, we're assuming that one, there is one SIF per hazard scenario. So you can see in the table how much time you might spend on 50 SIFs using Excel or an in-house tool and how much time you might spend on 50 SIFs using Excellentia. Again, this isn't going to take any time. It's automatically calculated. Once you have completed SIL selection, you move on to your safety requirements specification. This specification outlines the purpose and target SIL of each SIF. It should answer a few questions. What is the safe state? What equipment needs to be protected? What actions must be taken? And what is the response time of those actions? The document summarizes findings from the entire analysis phase of the safety lifecycle and becomes the guideline for design and implementation. Excellentia has an SRS module. You can see the screenshot here. And much of this information is populated from your LOPA and your PHA. You can see there's a calculated demand rate. All your tag names should already be in there, etc. So what's the difference from using an in-house tool? To so write the SRS from scratch might take three hours per SIF. However, with use of Excellentia, your information is pre-populated. This automatically generates a report with little more than one hour needed per SIF to customize. So in this case, for 50 SIFs, use of Excellentia can save 100 hours. And that completes the analysis phase. Moving on to design and implementation, we start with SIL verification. So for each SIF, the achieved SIL level is the lowest value of the following factors. The SIL level based on the probability of failure on demand and low demand applications for the sum of all pieces of equipment in the SIF. The SIL level based on minimum architectural constraints of each element in the SIF. And the SIL level based on the systematic capability for each piece of equipment in the SIF. So I'm going to go through each of these in a little detail. The average probability of failure on demand must be calculated for each device. This calculation depends on a few parameters. The failure rate and failure modes of each device, the mission time, the mean time to restore, the probability of initial failure, the redundancy, the proof test intervals and effectiveness, and your site safety index. I don't want to go too deep into this because it is quite complicated in my opinion. So for more information on the PFD average calculation, please see Exodus white paper, the key variables needed for PFD average calculation. And the details are all in there. 
Next, you want to analyze your SIL level based on systematic capability. To demonstrate systematic capability, the equipment selected must be IEC 61508 certified or a proven and use justification must be documented. The objective here is to ensure that there are no systematic failures for the application that the devices are used in. And finally, the SIL level based on architectural constraints. So your minimum architectural constraints are determined based on redundancy levels in the SIF. During SIL verification, conceptual design of the SIF will be modeled and redundancy is determined. In some cases, the quality of the fill rate data may, must be validated per IEC 61508 Route 2H. For more information on this, please see Exit as webinar. What architectural constraints does my device mean and what does it mean? To get a better of a to get a better idea of what this entails, I put a few screenshots of our Excellentia module Silver. In Silver, you can easily model the SIF. I'm showing a pretty simple SIF here, but you would enter your basis for architectural constraints. You would say if you want to consider system systematic capability right here, and you would put in relevant information such as your mission time, your startup time, what is your demand rate, and any comments and assumptions. Here I'm showing modeling of the sensor. In this case, it's a pressure transmitter. In Excellentia, you can enter tag, num tag numbers, you can Enter your proof test intervals, your proof test coverage, your mean time to restore. And here you see our safety equipment reliability handbook allows you to simply pick a piece of equipment with all of its failure rate data included. So in this case, we've picked a pressure transmitter. On the side here, you can classify it. Does it trip high? Does the alarm drive it over or under range? Etc. And all of this helps you to calculate your SIL level based on this sensor with these failure rates. The same can be done with your logic solver. In this case, we have a Delta V logic solver. You can put in your mean time to restore, your proof test interval, and your proof test coverage. All of these go into those calculations. Finally, you can put in your final element. In this case, it's a remote actuated valve. You can classify it if it's open or close on trip and some of the same parameters we had in the other two. Here you see the summary. So for each, if you look down here, for each part of the SIF, we have a PFD average and a mean time to fail spuriously. And then for on the side here, we have the SIL level according to the architectural constraints and the systematic capability. This results in an overall achieved safety integrity level. So here you see the combination of the three for PFD average, the SIL level combination for architectural constraints, and the SIL level combination for systematic capability, and the top is your overall achieved. Silver also calculates your risk reduction factor and your mean time to fail spurious. The tool accomplishes a lot with only a few inputs. So for our time estimate, we said to gather all necessary information and perform the calculation without Silver, with an in-house tool or with Excel, could easily take eight hours per SIF. However, the Silver module has industry failure data, as I showed you, um, from Exodus Safety Equipment Reliability Handbook embedded. So users of the tool can model the SIF and specify the equipment by selecting from that database. With all the necessary data on hand, the tool uses a Markov model basis to automatically calculate the achieved SIL level. 
If the selected equipment does not meet your target fill level, it is simply a matter of selecting a different device from the SCRH or adjusting one of the other conceptual design parameters, perhaps adding redundancy or changing your proof test, maybe adding um, advanced diagnostics. But it's, it's just a matter of selecting those different parameters and the tool automatically calculates. For these reasons, modeling one SIF in silver takes approximately one hour. So this one hour counts, accounts for the calculation, the, gather, the gathering of failure rate data. It does not include vetting equipment for compa compatibility with the process. So this is simply specifying the equipment and the calculation. So in this case, if you're modeling 50 SIFs, you can save 150 hours by utilizing Excelentia. So that's a big chunk of time. After you have determined your conceptual design, you can write your design SRS. So in this case, the safety re requirement specification would have all of your SIF information as you've specified in SIL verification. The hardware requirements are defined here as well as logical relationship information between inputs and outputs. It defines, among other things, the application level diagnostics, analog signal health range, voting arrangements, repair time requirements, process connection requirements, auxiliary inputs and outputs. Writing this specification from scratch may take approximately three hours per SIF if you're doing it without Excelentia. In Excelentia, most of the required information is input or calculated during SIL verification and can be transferred to the design SRS module from Silver. You can input additional information like auxiliary inputs and outputs. From there, the document is automatically generated. This should take the user only half an hour per SIF. In this case, if you're documenting 50 SIFs, use of Excelentia should save you 125 hours. Once the SIF is designed, it must be programmed into a PLC. Information must be converted to this application program, including inputs, outputs, voting arrangement, and trip delays. Programming this manually can be a very simple yet time-consuming process, averaging four hours per SIF. For users of Excelentia and Delta V, Excelentia's Delta V Sys Configurator module will automatically convert the information put into Silver and the Design SRS into an application program. This will allow for significant time savings with the ability to convert all SIFs in one import. So once your conceptual design is finished, you can simply import this into Delta V once. That is to say, you will need probably to customize it a little bit or make adjustments. So without Excelentia, again, we assume this would take four hours per SIF. With Excelentia, we assume you're going to need half an hour per SIF for, for those customizations. So for 50 SIFs, use of Excelentia should save almost 200 hours. Please note that the estimate focuses on the logic creation and does not account for HMI graphics, etc. The cool thing about this automatic conversion also is that it eliminates the need for a programmer to interpret the design SRS information and creation of intermediate logic diagrams like cause and effect matrices. It also drives consistency and hopefully eliminates rework. You might not have heard of this before. It is a new plugin to our tool, but Again, it takes your information from Silver and converts it automatically into Delta V. This is what it might look like in Delta V for a simple SIF. 
For more information on the Delta V Sys converter, please see last week's webinar, Application Program Creation Based on Conceptual Design. I believe a demo was done in there, and it, it does a lot more detail on this subject than this webinar does. Finally, definition of proof test procedures are a pretty important part of the design and implementation phase. So your proof test interval and your proof test effect effectiveness for each device in a SIF are key variables in the SIL verification calculation. So based on these parameters, a user will need to define a specific proof test for each device. Manufacturers of IEC 61508 compliant equipment are required to publish a proof test in their safety manual. This must be collected and documented in one specification to guide operators through the proof test once the system is installed and online. Silver actually helps you with this if you choose a piece of equipment out of the safety equipment reliability handbook. So each piece of equipment has its own proof test procedure built in. If you select a piece of equipment, you can click on the proof test coverage button and it will tell you that the proof test attributed to this device has X coverage. At the end of your SIL verification, you can generate a report with all of the different proof test procedures for all of your SIFs and their devices. So I just put a screenshot in here of some of those proof tests. This follows along with the sample problem you've seen in all the other modules. So this is your PT501 as we saw earlier. This is your final element. And for each it shows the tag, the proof test interval, and the proof test coverage that is assumed in your conceptual design. Finally, it shows the different steps for each proof test. And so this is an automatic output of silver. For this reason, there is a time savings attributed to the proof test generator. So on average, three hours per SIF are required to complete the proof test specification. However, since you can automatically generate this from silver, you can save 2.5 hours per SIF in the process. So for a total of 50 SIFs, Excellentia users will save 125 hours on proof test specification. We left in about 30 minutes per SIF for any customization of the proof test. Perhaps in the case of something like this, where you have a solenoid and then a valve and an actuator, you might want to combine that proof test. And so that is what that time is for. So once your design and implementation is finished, you're moving on to the operation and maintenance phase. So to demonstrate compliance with the safety standards, you must collect data during the life of your plant and compare it to your conceptual design. IEC 61511 requires proof test recording, recording of failure rates, recording of process demands. And as of the 2016 revision, performance review of functional safety assessment after gaining experience in operation and maintenance of your system is required. So this is pretty important. You can't skip this. In order to properly record all of this data, you probably want to configure it into a database. So all the information from your conceptual design will be needed to keep track of your devices, your physical device locations, your maintenance activities and proof tests. Putting all of this information into a database could be a time-consuming task. We assumed on average it would take six hours per SIF. However, if you use Excellentia, you can import SIP information from Silver and the de Design SRS into our module SILSTAT. You only have to do this once. We assume this import would take half an hour per SIF, taking into account any customization again as needed. In this case, that customization might simply be tag numbers, it might be how you want to 
configure your hazard scenarios. It might be that same proof test customization that I talked about in the last step. So in this case, to configure 50 SIFs, use of Excelentia can save 275 hours. Once your plant hierarchy is configured, you can do your proof test recording, your device failure recording, and your process demand recording right out of SILSTAT. In fact, all of your life events can be kept in on one sheet. You might notice this is just one tab in SILSTAT. It's your view events, event viewer tab. Well, once your plant is configured, you can use SILSTAT right out of the box to do your proof test, maintenance, device failure, and process demand recording. It is expected that recording with SILSTAT will be easier than a homegrown database due to ease of use. This is what this tool is for. If you're using a different program that's actually meant for other things, it might not be as easy, it might not be as quick. However, we conservatively assumed an equal amount of time will be spent on your proof test and device failure recording. Finally, the goal here is to compare your actual performance with your per assumed performance. So you may find that your risk reduction is adequate, that it's inadequate, or that it's more than adequate. In all cases, data collected and lessons learned during operation of a plant can be used for analysis of new process systems. To be compliant to the safety standard, it is important to have the ability to prove compliance. Ooh, it is important to have the ability to prove that you've been compliant in the event of a safety audit. These audits can be random or as a result of an incident. At such a time, all relevant functional safety documentation will be reviewed. This includes reports for your PHA and LOPA, report from your SIL selection, your SIL verification, and your proof tests, as well as your safety requirements specification before your design and after your design. In addition, evidence of life event recording, including proof tests, maintenance activities, and failure recording must be shown. This is a hefty task, so collection of this information can be quite challenging if it's not stored in a centralized location. However, for Excelentia users, all the necessary information is embedded in your Excelentia file. For this comparison, we have conservatively estimated that use of Excelentia will save nearly 30 hours when preparing for an audit. So here we put the per SIF, it might take 32 hours to compile all this information, oh, I'm sorry, per, per 50 SIFs, and then per 50 SIFs using Excelentia, it would just take four. The idea here is that when you're using a full safety lifecycle tool, your, your project information for that, for, for your analysis, your design and implementation, et cetera, is all in one file. This is extremely helpful when it comes to auditing, as well as the automatically generated reports. So this is a huge time saver. In conclusion, you can see now how each of the modules will help you in your project to save time. Again, a lot of that time savings is automatic import or transfer of information from module to module. Some of it is due to embedded databases where you can just choose and select information right in the tool. Some of it is automatic report generation and some of it is even more straightforward like taking your conceptual design and programming your PLC. Overall, we have concluded that analyzing 10 nodes and subsequently analyzing, implementing, and maintaining 50 SIFs using Excel or an in-house tool will take a grand total of approximately 2,000 hours. However, for users of Excelentia, these same tasks should take only 600 hours. 
Depending on the hour, hourly rate of the engineers assigned to each task, Excellentia will save 120 to 240K per 10 nodes and 50 SIFs. It is possible for a system in the process industry to have hundreds of nodes and SIFs. Based on this analysis, we can assume that use of Excel or an in-house tool is nearly four times more expensive than use of the complete Excellentia suite. And you can see those numbers there. If you want to see the impact of cost savings based on your specific work process or your specific hourly rates, we would be happy to set up a meeting and work through the estimate together. We realize that this is sort of an average depending on the complexity of your system. This could vary from site to site, from company to company. However, we believe this is a, a good estimate of the benefit of using a complete safety lifecycle suite to do all of your safety lifecycle tasks. If you want to know more, Exida is presenting and exhibiting at AICHE CCPS 13th Global Congress on Process Safety. This is March 26th through 29th in San Antonio, Texas. I will be there along with my coworkers. We have Ewan, Todd, and Denise going as well. You could come to the booth and get a live demo of anything you saw here today. So I believe that is it for today. At present, I don't see any questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to send out these slides to you. If you have any questions, you can contact me directly. And we will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. I hope that you learned something from the webinar. Let us know what, what your thoughts are. Thank you very much. Have a good day.